Imagine, if you will, an astronaut killed on a dangerous mission, but who refuses to stay dead. Tonight, we follow a branch in the Craftiverse timeline, a place of super scopy, hot glue, occasional frustration, and undead astronauts. Tonight, we enter a strange world known as Retro Futurism. That's right, we're gonna take a cue from the book covers, movie posters, and general feeling of science fiction as viewed through the lens of 1950s futurism. We're gonna sculpt a couple of figures to help bring our own craftiverse timeline to reality. If this sounds good to you, then let's get our craft on. All right, let's get going. I hope this doesn't take long because there's a zombie movie coming on. It's about a plane that crashed into the side of a mountain in the dead of winter. They spend the whole movie trying to figure out if they should eat the people who died in the crash. Gross. But instead, they eaten by zombies. Arnie. Wait, how did the zombies get on top of the mountain? Uh, a failed climbing expedition in the 1890s plus some gamma rays. Uh, so the zombies were pretty hungry by the time of the crash. Sounds like a winner. So this is an homage I made based off of this reference pose. Any wild guesses as to who this is? And we're gonna cover both of these homages with epoxy sculpt for strength. the magic of editing he's covered and dry so now we're gonna cover him up with some aluminum foil and this is used to bulk out and kind of get a basic outline of the figure and then we're gonna cover him up with some sculpting Now, Dinu, you know how much I hate the sculptors guild and I got my beef with them but unbelievably, I think I share their opinion. This is not quality work. I'm roughing out the sculpture. I just started. You know, it's not going to look good for a while. If ever. It, yeah, if ever. So I'm putting some bacon bond glue around the aluminum foil. Going to make a face here. And I'm making this little skeleton guy. So now might be a good time for me to tell y'all what I'm actually trying to do. Finally. Retro Futurism. I've always loved these old paintings of magazines and book covers from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Whether they're science fiction, horror, pulp fiction, or detective novel stories. However, I've always been fascinated with the imagery of the undead astronaut, which is like a skull in an astronaut suit. And this movie in particular, Robot Monster from the 1950s, just captured my imagination. Not the movie itself, which is not very good, but the imagery of this skull in an astronaut's helmet just seems so cool to me. I'm pretty sure this movie didn't have the budget for an astronaut's costume, so they just went with a gorilla suit. But we're gonna give our version of this guy an actual astronaut's uniform. The other thing this fantastical imagery did was illustrate a story which is designed to capture the viewer's imagination so that they buy the book or magazine and read the story. So I'm gonna do my own version of this pulp art, except I'm gonna do my own timelines in the Craftyverse with my own characters. I hope this sounds fun. Now this is the carving texture that got me really excited to start this project. And basically, it's just after the sculpey is baked, I'm carving it out, just like you would do wood. Except the sculpey is nice and soft, and it's pretty easy to carve. Right here, the sculpey was too thin, so what it did was made a hole. So I'm pushing back the aluminum foil, and then I'm just going to fill it again with more sculpey. Let's carve his face. I 
was a little unsure of how to make a helmet for this guy. So let's just start with what they call a torus, which is just a round ring. It's kind of like a donut. It's too small. Let's make it bigger. It's my patented spinning technique. And there we go. Let's put them in the oven. I'm telling you, every time this guy shows up, there's going to be trouble. So this is what I'm thinking for the diorama, the layout. The intergalactic hookworms are going to be in the foreground, hiding behind something, and the other guy's coming in looking for them. So I didn't quite nail the vibe of the curves of the hookworm. Uh, he didn't have the right feel to him, so I'm having to carve away parts to give me more depth so that I can give him more of a slithering worm-like feel. Worm-like. Now, I love this little ball tool. It allows you to almost sew the different pieces of clay together. This thing is the bomb. Am I the last person to still say that phrase? Probably. Now he's got a better feel. So I got them all carved up. Now I'm attaching them with some epoxy sculpt. It's really important to get the angle of the head the way you want changes the character and the feel so much. I'm using a small carving tool to add some of that same rough texture to the eyeball. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> what happened to air zombies? Uh, the movie got off to a slow start. They still at the freaking airport. I was ready for some zombies, but it's a slow burner. Heaven forbid. Don't worry. When I hear some screams in the background, that'll be a pretty good indicator that it's uh, safe to go back and watch. Who needs plot? Hey, your little sculpture's getting better. He looks like a dead Eskimo who's opening the fridge to get a Klondike bar. What? Are you hungry? Always. It's my cross to bear in life. Uh, that and, and you. So I got two crosses. Go figure. And if we look at the sculpture, this is how I like to make a straight line. So I just use a bent piece of wire. I found this is the easiest, most consistent way to be able to do this. At least for me. Yawn. I'm gonna go see if the plane is at least starting to crash because this is way more boring than watching those people check their luggage in. And that's why your sculpting career is never gonna take off. Hey, the fuel gauge is blinking red. We're going down. Hey, I don't know if you notice, but my wife, she paints. And she did this really cool painting called Tiki Headhunter. And uh, look at these poor guys. They mess with the wrong dude. This guy has some serious anger issues. I love this purple in the background and also these volcanoes exploding. Plus he's got an angry pineapple on his head. I really dig how she painted this font that she came up with. It's cool. So that's Tiki Head Hunter by Maguire. Go check her out, my wife. Having antennas sticking out from your helmet was pretty important in the 50s, as was having a backpack with lots of uh, gizmos and things on it. Doesn't hurt to have an aftermarket ray gun either. 
Check this out. This is from a little stick for surfboard. It's the fins on the bottom, but it helps make a perfect little ray gun. Double barrel. Need some sci-fi angles. Sci-fi. Now, when I do a hand, what I usually try to do is make it look like an oven mitt or a, a boxing glove right away to kind of really rough it out. You see what I mean? It's kind of got an oven mitt feel. Now it's feeling more like a boxing glove. Let's put the gun in there to make sure that the fingers are long enough to wrap around and fit correctly. Let's cut out the fingers. Hey! I'm back. Oh, thank goodness. Oh man, is that supposed to be his hand? That does not look too good, Tino. I admire how you can walk into a brand new situation and at a glance give you a full opinion. Thank you. So what, he's wearing bangles now? That's an air sealant for space. Oh, but check this out. The hand keeps wanting to dip because of the weight of the gun. So I'm gonna prop it up with a stick and then bake it. A little more depth in between those fingers. Hey, does that ray gun vaporize people or just put holes in them? Vaporize. That's the best way. Let's clean up. I recognize this guy. What are you running out of ideas? I certainly hope not. No, I'm using this guy because uh, when I was trying to think of a book cover, this guy uh, kept popping up. So I guess he wanted to be in the scene. You can really see how the carved texture is accentuated with the dry brushing. Yeah, I'm liking the way this is feeling. Now that the hand is dry, we're gonna carve some of that. Oven mitt, or boxing glove. Fingers. A little metal trigger for the gun. A ray gun. Yeah, it'd probably be pretty smart if he would uh, invest in basic cable. He'd get better reception and uh, overall better movie choices. For your information, this was Enterprise Class Top Tier Technology back in the 1950s. All right. I really love how the dry brushing brings out the ridges on this carved texture. Let's enhance your best features, so we'll try to draw attention to the eyes. Our fall line of colors is definitely the best fit with your unique complexion. Who is he telling to stop? No, he's not telling anyone to stop. I think he's gonna be like holding a door open, like he just kicked it in. Oh, the movie's back on, gotta go. Sap Green. Now what I'm doing here is adding a real watery base coat. I want to keep the color really subtle on these two figures. And he's going to get like an orange, almost cosmonaut type suit. This is real watered down acrylic paint. And we're going to tie it all together in a little bit. I bought this plastic Christmas ball at the dollar store for a dollar and I cut out a chunk of it. And then I made this face plate. And sand the edges, get it smooth. So I'm making an edge with masking tape because I kind of want to put a black border around the face plate. And I actually ended up ditching this particular one because I had to make the tape thinner. This allows me to make smooth the curves. Then, and there we go. Let's just use a sharpie to make this black border. Now notice I'm pulling the marker away from the edge of the tape. You don't want to push the paint or marker underneath it. This is always the scary part. But it came out pretty good. I went over the model with a watered down burnt umber to give accent to the real dark indentions. 
and this helps to make everything feel like it's in the same world. It gives it some cohesiveness. Okay, I'm back. That train wreck of a movie is over. Well, wouldn't it be considered a plane wreck of a movie? No, Dino, it's a plane crash or a train wreck. Get your terminology straight. Noted. Wait, did I miss something? You're doing electronic tutorials now? No, these are just two cool USB cables that I found for a dollar a piece at the dollar store. I think it has the right look for some sci-fi wiring. So, back to the train crash. What, you didn't like your zombie movie? It's not exactly an Oscar contender. I was hoping the zombies were gonna win, but one guy survived. You root for the zombies? Yeah, I'm a sucker for an underdog story. Uh, the last zombie got head-butted off the cliff by an angry mountain goat. The main character had fed her a granola bar earlier in the movie because it was starving, so it uh, came back to help him. You know, it kind of sounds like a heartwarming story. Yeah, that was the biggest problem with it. But you know, the goat and the guy are hugging on the mountain and then they uh, cut to black and roll credits. But when you really stop and think about it, the guy's still stuck on a mountain and he's still starving. And there's the goat. Still flush with granola. So, you tell me what happened next. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is make a diorama for these guys. I'm going to try to do a 1950s style kitchen where the intergalactic hookworm is hiding from the undead astronaut. That should be fun, right?